my name is Richard, and um, my profession is, uh, I've been in the media for 30 years. Um, I'm 52 years old. My name is uh, Franco, and uh, I'm 47 years old, and uh, I've been an electrician for a little over 30 years now. My name is Gary. I have a Bachelor of Science and Master of Science in uh, nuclear chemistry. I have a half Master's in nuclear engineering. I have an MBA. My name is Josh. Uh, I am 30 years old. Um, I'm a musician label owner. Uh, my experience was in 1999, uh, approximately June. So uh, I got pulled over for driving without a license and uh, when I uh, didn't have a license because it had been revoked, they took me to jail. So um, in going to jail, I was there approximately eight days and in my third day, I had um, an experience where I was looking out the window, you know, it's in jail, you uh, look out the window a lot, and um, there was nothing out the window for days, and then at one point I saw a UFO pop up from the ground, and it was really detailed, it was really very close, in less than a quarter of a mile. I could see it had a, a white glow, it had uh, it was dark green and sort of a, a teardrop shape in the back. Uh, was larger than the than the front. Um, I could see that against the gray clouds it had a white glow, and um, it kind of went up into the clouds and it tooled around, and it, it, it kind of did just like somebody was test driving it. It was just kind of going around, you know, uh, just moving oddly, then it came back down and uh, back to kind of where it came up from, and then it just went on a straight path, and it was flying very slowly um, towards the north. And uh, <clears throat> the Boulder Jail faces the east, and the windows are uh, uh, pretty much directly east, and then directly north is um, where it was flying, so it was to my left. So it was going, and it went out of my view, and then pretty much I didn't have any time to think about it before I saw another one. This one popped up from the ground uh, in the same manner. Now it's a kind of a hill and it, it came up and instead of doing what the other one did it just kind of went on the same path. And it went uh, same speed, same level, trajectory, everything like that. And um, went all the way out of sight. And uh, there was about two or three more. I think there was about five in total. And uh, every time that I went, one would go out of my view, it would be not 20 seconds before another one would pop up. Uh, it, it pops up and you know does the same path. And, uh, and then it stopped. Okay, and so then... Um, you know, we have dinner in the jail, and then there's, uh, and it got dark, and it went back out, uh, and by the window, and I'm just waiting for more, and I was probably there about a half an hour, and this was maybe like 8 o'clock at night or so, um, probably later, actually. Uh, so anyway, so it was dark, and I was hoping for something to happen and, and it did and another one came up and it started again and uh, for the same pattern only this one looked like an airplane and it flashed like an airplane it uh, was the speed of an airplane which is not something I noticed by the ones before because there was very clearly dark green crafts unmarked crafts and um, there was maybe another three or four that that went uh, in, in that manner. And I guess I'm like most people. I had to see one before I could really accept the fact that these exist. My third sighting was on September 1st of 2006. We were coming home from a family party. It was 945. The visibility was horrible. Uh, 
it was a combination of rain and snow with heavy fog. You could not see taillights 100 feet in front of you. I was coming down Highway 72 near our development, which puts me about a couple of miles from the house, and I saw an incredibly bright light at a distance of over a half a mile, maybe a mile. And I couldn't even make out the street light at the end of uh, the road for our development. And I said to my wife, I said, what in the heck is that bright light? Well, she wouldn't look at it because I had made the mistake of saying, I think it's a UFO. As we approached the development, we turned left onto our road, which goes north and, <laughs> excuse me, north and south. And at that point, there's a, there was a house that's being built 200 yards back off the road. It had no power yet. This bright light, which appeared to be about 30 inches in diameter, it was so bright it was difficult to look at. And remember, I couldn't see taillights 100 feet in front of me, but this light was so bright at 200 yards that I, it was hard to look at, began to move slowly towards us. We continued on past that property, uh, made a right turn so that we were facing west. By that time I saw the light had moved out several hundred feet in front of the house uh, and was moving north and was near, near crossing the highway. We continued on up the mountain to our house and we got to the turn. I looked back and just in time to see it disappear behind the mountain on the other side of Highway 72. Um, I went back the next day. There are no poles with lights on them that are within five feet of the peak of that house. There are no lights that I could see anywhere near that house. Um, the, I also went back at night. There, were, there is a yard light for a house that's a couple hundred yards north of there. There is, there is no possible source. Now I've been asked, well, could it have been a helicopter? No, it couldn't because of the fog. I've seen helicopters take off in the fog and you get a swirling sensation around them. There was no movement of the fog or the rain around this light. And uh, back in June of uh, this year, 2006, uh, June 6th actually, um, I witnessed a, uh, I guess you could call it a UFO sighting, UFO, up in North Boulder off uh, a lake there in North Boulder called uh, Wonderland Lake. And um, it was about, oh, five to seven minutes after 2 a.m. in the morning. And uh, I actually was staying at this particular place because I was in transit moving from one place to another, from Boulder to Longmont, and I picked up a room uh, out of the paper just to stay. And, and I was up late that night working on my computer. And it was real quiet, nice night, clear. Uh, there was no rain or anything like that, and I started hearing all the dogs outside barking, just just wild, just rah, 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 rah. And there was other people staying in the house that were actually renting rooms there um, during that time, and um, they, I'm pretty sure they were trying to sleep at any rate. And I got up and I, I looked out the window, and we're right on the lake there, this beautiful, uh, uh, like, man-made lake. And there was this craft hovering over the lake, good, probably... I don't know, 15, 20 feet above the lake, just moving back and forth like this, kind of like, almost as if it was looking for something, just cruising along. And I, of course, when I saw it, I was shocked. I was like, oh, wow, you know, what is this? And it had these big, beautiful orange lights coming off it, like a, like a cream orange color, beautiful. And they were huge. They were probably, oh, you know, probably 10 feet in diameter, each one of the lights. And then in a split second, it just shot up the side of the mountain. And right there in West Boulder, there's this beautiful sloping hill. And um, it faces west. And it, I would say from the lake to the top of the mountain, it was a good two, 300 yards up there. And it's nice, real, real gentle slope. And it just shot up to the top, like in a second, like that. Boom, and it sat up there. And it... At that point, you know, my heart was pretty much racing. I was like, oh, you know, this is pretty wild. But I didn't, have any, I didn't have any equipment with me. I had no cameras. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't, you know, go knock on everybody's door, wake them up. I just, that's not who I am. I can't do that. So I just sat there and I watched it. And this thing started, started swaying back and forth, just like a bell, just kind of moving like this with these lights. It's almost as if it was just taking a look around. 
and there was houses along the edge of the lake there were stretched farther to the edge of the hill, or the sloping hill there. And the lights all started coming on. People were looking up there, trying to figure out what was going on. And then this thing, uh, at this time, when this whole incident is going on now, is probably, oh, a good five to ten minutes have gone by now. And this thing is still sitting up there, hovering, moving back and forth. And all the dogs in the neighborhood are just barking, still barking, just, just out of control barking. And that's what woke everybody up in the neighborhood and is trying to figure out what this commotion is. So at this point, this thing kind of turns around. You see the lights kind of turn a different direction, like it's turning around. And it moved over to the left, which from where it was to where it sat down was a good probably, you know, 150 feet or so, maybe more. And it sat down. You could see it just sat down. And then the, the rear end of this craft, which was pretty big, it was at least the size, half the size of a house, started glowing this intense ruby red color. And the size of, the, of this light, you could tell, was something amazing. And it began to just pulsate. And then right when it sat down and it began to pulsate, this incredible red, deep red ruby red color, all the dogs in the neighborhood just went silent. There wasn't a noise. You could hear a pin drop. And you felt this like energy, and you you felt like, oh man, this is this is for real. And at this point, I, I looked out, and the houses that had their lights on all shut their lights off, and you could tell people were they were afraid. So I was like, oh, okay. And I, I watched it for a few moments, and it just got brighter and brighter, this beautiful red color. And I had my laptop on, so I jumped on and I said, okay, I need to report this. So I, I put in, um, you know, report a UFO and the Google search. And it came up with the National Reporting Agency. And I, so I started reporting it. I had a little form. And they asked me in the form, when, when, when did this incident take place? You know, what did it look like? What the colors look like? And they said, when did this incident take place? And I said, well, it's happening right now, right this very moment. And, you know, and I sent it off. And I just went back to the window, and I started watching. It wasn't eight minutes later that I started hearing the sound of military jets closing in on our, on our position. And uh, right when I started to hear that noise of the jets approaching, this red light, which at this point was really bright, it was almost as if it was like getting stronger, it just went down to a single little point, like a little trickle of purple. And it went up into the air, probably, you know, 1,500, 2,000 feet, just shot up real quick, sat there for just a moment, and then shot off, off like, off into the, just boom, like that. And then right after that, you could hear the jets just go over, go overhead real quick. They just went, and that was the end of it. It was, um, it, it was 1989, and I had two separate experiences um, in two different evenings, about a month apart from each other. I used to work at KGGM Television in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And my home was uh, Grand Junction, Colorado.